So this last video is to talk more generally about network design models. So we've studied in this class a number of different models from the set covering to the demand allocation model to the capacity of facility location model and then ending with the multi-echelon location model. And I think it's critical to understand what each of these models are doing, what are they deciding, what are they uh, modeling in terms of constraints and objective function, and then what type of optimization models we have. Um, and so I think it is important to think about this broader. And so let's just start thinking about um, the most simplest model was actually the demand allocation model. And that didn't determine any locations, it just determined how much do I ship between locations that are already decided. Um, and that uh, constraints is that you only have so much capacity and all the demand must be filled. And we're able to model that as a linear program. The reason we're able to model that as a linear program is that we have continuous variables. We only have the xijs, which is the quantity shipped between i and j. Um, and we have uh, linear constraints and linear objective function in terms of decision variable. So we have an LP. Uh, why I'm emphasizing the optimization model type is linear programs are much, much easier. They're more tractable to solve uh, than integer linear programs. And so if you notice on the rest of the models we studied, they're all of integer of some type. Um, and so they are harder, they're less tractable to solve than the demand allocation problem. So you may say, okay, if they're harder to solve, then why do we have them? The thing is, is to build a facility is a yes or no, it's a binary decision. And so we need that binary or integer variable to be able to model more interesting um, logical problems. And so the rest of the models we studied, the set covering, the capacitative facility location model, and the multi-echelon location model are all uh, integer in some sense. Um, they have a binary decision variable. Then we also have mixed integer because in the last two models we have both integer and continuous variables. Why am I spending a bunch of time on that is I think as a uh, industrial and systems engineer, as a supply chain uh, manager, you will oftentimes be modeling things um, in your jobs um, in the future. And if you can model something without an integer variable, you should do that uh, because it is much, much easier to solve. You can use simplex. Um, the middle minute you have an integer variable, you will have a different solution approach. That is not to say we can't still solve large problem sizes, even optimally, even quite quickly, there's been immense uh, advancement in integer programming in the last you know, 10 to 15 years, both from computational power, but as, as important in algorithms and a lot of PhD theses and research have really pushed the boundary of what is possible. So we can solve uh, integer programs that are quite large, um, quite powerfully, usually using Cplex or Gurobi, uh, not Excel Solver, um, but I put that in there is that uh, that is something I believe you should walk away with your degree is understanding the differences. And so a linear program is easier to solve than an integer program, um, but you're not able to model as cool as stuff with a strictly linear program. Okay, so you should understand there's different modeling types. The other thing I think that's important to understand is what model is appropriate in what situation. And so let's take the set covering model, which determines where to locate a set of facilities, um, and the capacitated facility location model, which also determines where to locate a set of facilities. And so you may ask, well, when should I use the set covering and when should I use the capacitated facility location model? The key things here are what are in the constraints and what are in the objective function. If you remember the set covering, um, the constraint is that all demand points must be met with a given criteria. So we have some covering criteria that could be, I need to be reachable within 30 minutes. It could be, I need to be adjacent uh, to everywhere there's a location. It is some predefined criteria, but once you predefine it, it applies to every single location, uh, neighborhood, demand, whatever you're talking about. That is in contrast to the capacitated facility location model, which says all demand requests must be satisfied, but it does not mean it has to be satisfied within 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be satisfied within very close uh, distance. Um, and so the difference here is we need to satisfy the demand in the capacity facility location model, but if there is low demand, like you have very little, you may actually be really, really far away and that's still a good solution. 
in the capacity and facility location model, in the objective function, there is minimize xij times cij, which means there is a penalty if I'm too far away, but that's not a constraint. And so that is a, a subtle difference uh, between the set covering and the capacitive facility location model. The set covering, you could think about as a more equitable model because no matter if there's little population, large population, little demand, large demand, they all need to be met by the same criteria. In the capacitive facility location problem, that constraint is not uh, there. There is no criteria that everybody has to have this uh, level of service. Instead, we penalize the fact that if we're far away, that means we have usually high transportation costs. And so we don't want that, but it might be justified because the fixed cost of building a facility is more than the variable cost. Okay? Um, so you should understand when each model is appropriate. And if you use the same input data um, and you said, I want to determine where should I locate a set of facilities using the set covering model versus the capacity of facility location model, Depending on what the inputs are, you could get very different answers. Your decision of where to locate could change because you're, you're modeling uh, different objectives primarily and different uh, constraints. So you should understand the differences between these models high level. All right, so let's, let's try that. Uh, so here's an example. Um, what type of model should be used if a pizza company wants to determine where to locate pizza stores to guarantee delivery to customers within 30 minutes of their order? Given our customer lives in a given neighborhood, set of neighborhoods, and each neighborhood has varying expected demand for pizzas. Is that the demand allocation model, the set covering model, a linear program, a capacitated facility location model, or a forecasting model? So the correct answer here is the set covering model. So the key here is we are determining where to locate facilities. So the demand allocation model does not determine locations. It just allocates resources. So A is incorrect. And so if we're, we're looking at locating a facility, we're basically between B, the set covering model, and D, the capacitive facility location model. So now we need to compare which one of these two models makes sense. And the key here is, is it says that we need to guarantee delivery to customers within 30 minutes of their order as long as they live in some set of neighborhoods. So in other words, it says, if you live in a set of neighborhoods that are given, we have to deliver your pizza within 30 minutes. That is a set covering criteria. Every single neighborhood needs to be reachable within 30 minutes, um, and therefore the set covering model is the appropriate model. One thing to note, is the set covering model totally ignores that there may be a really high demand for pizza in one location and really low demand for pizza in another location. That is not taken into account because again, the criteria is we need to be 30 minutes for everyone. It doesn't matter what your demand is, we need to be within 30 minutes. So the correct answer here is B. Okay, the next question is, what type of model is most appropriate if a pizza company wants to determine where to locate pizza stores that minimizes the total cost of opening a store and the fuel cost of making the deliveries to customers in a given set of neighborhoods? The options are the same as the previous um, slide. So in this uh, question, the correct answer is the capacitated facility location model. So here, we still determine where to locate stores, um, and we want to locate stores um, such that we're close to our customers. However, we might not be 30 minutes away from everyone. Instead, if we have high demand in one area, we will be incentivized to move closer to that. And so the key difference here is we are more efficient with our resources because we care about fuel costs and facility costs, and we wanna minimize that, but we're not restricting that we have to give the same service level to every neighborhood. So what might happen here, if you solve this, if you're the pizza company, you would have uh, potentially different service levels for your different neighborhoods. You wouldn't guarantee 30 minutes necessarily for someone living in a rural area, but you might be able to guarantee 30 minutes for someone living close by. And my last clicker kind of conceptual question is, what network design model was most likely used for this meme? So this meme says, just waiting for my package in Montana. So one thing to note is Montana is a relatively rural state. There aren't a lot of people there, and it's kind of far away from a lot of population centers. Um, and so what would be the correct answer for this question? Um, the correct answer I would say is either A or C. 
Um, it is incorrect to say this at covering model because typically we don't see these memes for New York City or for a populated area. We see them instead for places where uh, are less populated. So there's probably not, uh, this is not the criteria for everyone. This is a criteria for a rural, uh, less populated place. Um, and so A could be correct if we're thinking about like an Amazon, um, which is, or UPS, which is already have facilities and we just need to allocate our resources there. It could also be C, capacity location model to determine where should I locate, um, distribution hubs so that I meet my criteria. And what may happen is we have good service um, to more populated areas and less uh, good service to lower populated areas. So again, A or C, um, either of those could be argued. B is incorrect and uh, D, forecasting model is incorrect. Likely they forecast the demand okay. They just didn't use that, uh, they didn't make the decisions in the network design to enable us to get our packages quickly. Um, so one of the things to think about kind of also broadly is if you think about supply chain network design is a common thing that companies would do is they've decided their network over time, they have it, they have allocation strategies, and then they let demand happen and things happen. And what can happen is you can get a very non-optimized network. And sometimes it's called a spider web map, um, which you can see the lines uh, over on the left-hand side are much longer than the lines on the right-hand side. And so without optimizing where you locate facilities as well as how to allocate the demand to them, um, if your graph looks like the spider web, that is a problem. And that means you should probably think about investing in some network optimization capabilities, whether that's in-house or through consultants. And if you really like this part of the class, um, there are consultants that do this for a living. And so there are companies that do supply chain uh, network optimization, companies come to them and say, I want you to optimize my network. Um, and so part of it is the optimization um, aspects we are, we are working on uh, in class. And I think the harder part is the data. So you would have to get the data, you have to forecast, you have to estimate um, and do a ton of analysis. But it sounds like a quite a cool job. And so those are existing um, if you're interested in those types of Okay, so that ends the facility uh, design or facility location network design uh, lectures. Um, one thing I think that's really critical um, about this lecture is really understanding what model is appropriate and what you are modeling. So you should understand the assumptions you're making, the implications you're making by selecting certain models. Um, you should be able to, to formulate them. Um, so demand allocation, capacitative facility location, multi echelon location problems. That means defining correctly and fully the decision variables, uh, defining your objective functions, your constraints and input parameters. You should also understand what type of optimization model each of these are. Um, the demand allocation is a strictly linear program, whereas the capacitative facility location, multi-echelon um, location problems are mixed integer uh, linear programs. Uh, you should understand the properties of these models. So one key thing is anytime you have the flexibility to make decisions, that's always has the potential to do better in terms of your objective function if nothing else changes. And so that's a good thing. Um, so you have flexibility to change what your decisions are. Um, if you shouldn't change, then that's okay. Your optimization model will say don't change, right? So that's positive from an objective function, which is our goal. We're trying to maximize or minimize something, but it also increases complexity. And so there are things you should understand um, in that. And so thinking about if I relax, um, that I have the ability to, instead of have a fixed location, I can now choose, you're gonna have the potential to do better, but it also gets much more complicated. And you should be able to solve these problems using some sort of um, software. Excel Solver or uh, Cplex or Groby or something else, if you've used that in other classes, is great. And then understand the answers that come out of 